God bless you this morning for joining me for Awakening, uh, Awakening to Greatness Devotion. I really believe that this is the moment God wants you to come to the realization of the great potential that he's invested in you, that you don't just go through life, going through the rituals of our activities without recognizing the reason for your existence, the significance of why you are here on earth. That as long as you are breathing, you have not finished your purpose yet. There's something that God has ordained for you to do. And every morning I want you to be awakened to such greatness, to know that no matter your circumstance yesterday and what you've been through in the past, today is another day. It's a clean slate. You have to know that the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. So as you have come today, we are going to set ourselves on the right uh, pace. We are going to find out what it's going to take for us to, to be successful today by the measurement of heaven, not just here on earth. To recognize that we have everything we need to be able to achieve whatever we want in God. And so we need to really be under, come to that understanding that all things are possible. If you are distressed, confused, tired of being tired, overwhelmed with your circumstance, you want to throw in the towel, don't do that yet. Because when all is said and done, God is going to show up. You're going to have an encounter with God today. And he's going to give you that understanding that it's not over yet as long as you breathe. As long as you are alive, as long as you woke up, there is the potential to literally unleash your greatness that has been dormant in your, in your mediocrity. It's time for you to know there's excellence in you. Something good is about to happen to you. Now, before we get into God's word, I will always want us to acknowledge our God and, and give him the due reverence, the due glory, because he is worthy to be praised. So I don't want you to just listen or watch me. I want you to participate. I want you to engage. I want you to know that God is with you. So lift up your voice wherever you are. Let's begin to acknowledge God, bless him, magnify him, adore him. For without him we can do anything. Father, we bless you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We extol thee. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Le maleka da basso cotondo de bassia. Le break yalla bazon contore de bassicite. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you as we come this morning. We acknowledge you as our Father in heaven. We recognize that you are the King of glory. You have a kingdom, and we magnify you. We thank you that we are the children of the King. We are also part of your kingdom. Today we ask you, Abba Father, to give us your kingdom and we receive. We ask your spirit to take absolute control, have your way with us, that everything that is said and done will glorify your name. We give you all the praise and glory and honor and adoration. Even as we get into God, so open our eyes to behold Jesus and be transformed. Let your word be cleansing into our lives, let it be help to our flesh. And let the light of God break forth out of your word and disperse every darkness, breaking the shackles of the enemy. And we pray that healing, deliverance, and prophetic directions will be released this morning. And Father, we thank you. Today we burn every satanic diabolical agenda. We pray that your word will have recourse into our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's quickly turn our Bibles to the book of... Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, I'm going to read from verse 12, Luke chapter 17, verse 12, the Bible says, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the praise. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Amen. We, we see this narrative about Jesus Christ entering into a city and he was met with ten lepers. And 
these lepers were outside of the city. The Bible declares that Jesus, they cried unto Jesus, says, have mercy on us, Master. That means they recognized that he was the Messiah. They recognized who he was. And they pleaded with him to at least help them. They didn't describe the state in which they need the help. Because I think they could not bring themselves to believe for complete healing of leprosy. It was not done at that time yet. It was an improbable tax. Something that could not be done. Doctors could not fix it. And because, because of the law, they had to be thrown out of the city. They lost their heritage. They lost their religious uh, ability to go to the gathering of the saints. I mean, the gathering of believers at that time. They lost their properties, everything about who they are. They lost it because of their leprosy. Because at that time, if you're a leper, leper, you are not allowed to stay in the city. You are ostracized. You are rejected by family. They had to literally put you out because you're unclean. And so you see these people who are living their life outside of the city, outside of the scope of the blessings of the inheritance of Israel. They are not able to have fellowship and intimacy with God even as they go to the tabernacle or the temple. And so we see these things going on. And Jesus, they see Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on us. Jesus, looking unto them, says to them, go and show yourself to the priest. Now, at that time, when you are a leper, you believe that you've been healed, you recovered from the leprosy, the only person who is able to examine you and to receive you back to civilization, to, to the community, is the priest. And so when Jesus says to them, go and show yourself to the priest, he is making them aware that they are healed. Because the only way you are going to show yourself to the priest is when you are here. Because if you come to the city, uh, you were not healed and you entered into the city, you are immediately stoned to death. That was the law, that was the judgment, so that you don't just uh, come into the city assuming that you are here without proof. But the only person who is able to now restore you back to the community is the prince. He has to examine you, look at your, the evidence, look at your body and examine and find out if there's anything, nothing wrong, then you will be received back to the community. And so when Jesus says to them, go and show yourself to the priest, saying to them that they are healed. Interestingly enough, when Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest, nothing obviously happened. He had made a declaration, a prophetic declaration to them, you are healed, but nothing happened at the moment. But if you look at what he says, say, go and show yourself to the priest. Hmm. How can you go to show yourself to the priest where you don't have any evidence or manifestation of what Jesus is intending to communicate with them? He's telling them that they are healed. And yes, so nothing will show it. How many of you watching me that God has given you a promise and for these years you've not seen it, you've not experienced it, nothing is going on. You kind of wonder, wondering whether what you heard was authentic. What, what the revelation you received was from God because nothing seems, have, seems like it has changed. Yet the same condition you were in before the word came has not improved yet. You are stuck in your same cycle of defeat and disappointment. And yet still, God has not changed his mind. And so you find now that these lepers were lepro in a dilemma because if they go to the city and they are not healed, they will be stoned to death. So either you approach to the city, and obviously going to the city without having an evidence, a, 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 an evidence that they are healed is, is a serious danger to them. Meanwhile, Jesus says, go and show yourself to the priest. Now, what Jesus is telling them to do is easy. But the obedience of it is going to challenge their faith. God gives instruction that it is easy for us to do in the scope 
of our ability. But the doing of it challenges our faith. It challenges our thinking. It's going to make you look stupid, something like foolish. Because God always takes the foolish things to confound the wise. And so you cannot wonder. It's so easy to be healed. Now, leprosy is difficult to be healed. It's impossible, actually. And yes, the walking to show yourself to the priest is easy. God, Jesus is telling them to do an easy task to get the impossible done. That is what happens. But many of us will rather do the difficult task that is not based on faith because faith will make you look stupid. It will make you feel like you've lost your mind. It does not make sense. And yes, God wants you to do it. It is very simple in doing it, but it's very difficult in obedience. It's going to challenge everything within you. But until you are willing to trust God 100%, it's going to be difficult for you to embark on the walk of faith. Walking to the praise is easy, although it is dangerous to take that trip. And so they had to decide what to do. Now the Bible says, as they, and it came to pass, as they went, they were healed. And it came to pass. And so there was a prophetic declaration by Jesus Christ that, hey, go and show yourself to the praise. And then it came to pass as they went and so from the declaration of the prophecy them the awareness of what god intends of you that you come into the stimulation of your potential knowing what god intends for you to achieve nothing will happen the provision will not come the connections will not come nothing will happen to manifest that prophetic declaration until the bible says as they went so for it to come to pass, you must go. And many of us, we have received prophets when, as far as God is concerned, when he spoke, it was set, it is done. But the question is, are you willing to now align yourself to what God has said? Are you going to walk in the path of what God has said? If you want to be healed, if you want to receive the manifestation of the promise, if you want to make that prophecy word a reality, then your direction should be what? To the press. But many of us, because we have our own agenda, our own ambition, things we feel like we want to do, we keep on staying away, walking away from the press, which is a danger to us, and doing every other thing. But we want the prophecy to come to pass. We want to achieve the greatness God has promised us, but we don't embark on the, I mean, the journey. We don't go to the press. We want to do everything. But what exactly God has told you to do, we don't do. So, it makes our life, things are delayed, things are procrastinated, our hope is deferred, things are not happening as God promised. And then we now begin to blame God. You said this thing, you declared this thing, and it's not happening. Have you gone to see your priest, the place that God wants you to be? Are you there? Many of us are dislocated from the place of obedience, but we want the blessings of obedience. Many of us are deliberately living a lifestyle of rebellion and yes, we want the favor of God. Many of us are in the wrong churches, in the wrong mentorship. We are staying in the wrong, uh, we, are, we are literally submitted to the wrong pastors. We are in the wrong city. We are in the wrong place. And yes, we want the blessings of God. God spoke to Abraham, if you don't move from where you are and move from your family, your native land and go to a city, I will show you. That is the place I'm going to bless you. So we need to understand that God blesses the obedient, not the religious person who is sacrificing but not obedient to God's word. So the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. Went, where did they go? They went, they went to see the press. Now it did not, the Bible does not tell us that immediately they were healed as they went. So we don't know how close they were to the city, how close they were to the press. And as they went, something happened. So you need to understand, this morning, there are things that God expects you to do for you to be successful. There is a press, your ultimate aim, your goal, your destination that you need to go to. There are some people you need to see, people you need to talk, people you need to call. There are places you have to go. Be, being led by the Spirit, you will know. Now, the praise is the only person who can declare you healed. For the result that you're looking for, there's only one person who can help you. 
there's one there is a target place if you want money you need to make sure that you're in the right target market if you want the right relationship what kind of group of people can you be in there to be able to meet the right person so you have to understand whatever you are trying to get to whatever you are trying to achieve there is a destination of for its achievement you cannot say you want to be declared healed in the community in the community to be restored to the community and don't go and see the praise of the community so you have to ask yourself for what you want to achieve what is the praise that can literally put you in position for you to be able to access it so then, see, many of us, we wake up in the morning, we keep on going, 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 but we're not heading towards our praise. And so we are not getting the result. Whatever you really want to achieve is, is, is possible if only you obey God and go and see your praise. There is a praise for everything that God has ordained for you to receive. And so the Bible says, as they went, as they went, it came to pass. That as they were, they came to pass that they were healed. So what do you do? You find out what you want to achieve, what you want to restore, what you are trying to, your expectation. You find out the praise that you are supposed to connect to. And then you go. That means you take a step towards that direction. Now remember, Jesus said to them, go and show yourself. There, there is something about you that God has invested in you to bring you the restoration, the supply, everything. Everything you need is already buried in you. But until you go and see the praise, it will never manifest. And so once you have to understand, you need to recognize who you are. You need to know what talent that God has put in you. And showing yourself to the praise is showing yourself in the right target market, to the right people, in the right situation, and manifest the graces, the talent, and the gift to serve humanity in that community. And when you do that, you are going to have an impact. You are going to have such influence wherever you go. So today, I want you to know that it's not just prophecy that I'm talking about. I'm talking about how to be able to succeed in life and everything you do. Go and show yourself to the praise today. All the prophecies and the promises of God will never manifest until you go and show yourself to the praise. Today, take a step towards the direction of where you who you are is connected to serve your praise the person is able to really put you in position to have influence in the community again go and show yourself to the prayer because god is waiting for you to take your step so that he will manifest every prophetic word he's given to you as far as god is concerned everything about you is already established are you willing to take the journey of your destiny so that your greatness will be made manifest God bless you. Until next time, this is Rain of Mountain. Bye-bye.